Capsuleer fleets were seen traveling across many northern regions of New Eden over the past day, and skirmishes took place in multiple systems across the The TNT capital system of UMI... What is the spaceship video game? I'll tell you. This is the EVE Online review. The 2016 EVE Online review. Now you need to understand that EVE is 13 years old and all my other MMOs from that time are dead. But somehow, despite not having millions of players, EVE is still kicking. I'll try to explain why. I'm gonna assume you know only two things about EVE. Spreadsheets and the giant nerd fights that cover the news for a few days. Now I'm gonna be honest, I spent weeks thinking about how I was gonna do this. Like. Eve is hard to describe, but that's the problem. No one will actually talk about like the mechanics, they just say, it's really deep, it's complicated. I even looked up the latest video review of it by a guy named Nitroxygen Gaming, and he just does the same thing of talking about how deep and complicated everything is. He doesn't really go into detail. Gameplay in this is different than any other game really out there. That is debatable. Because of the fact that this game is so in-depth. I'm not calling him dumb, I don't really blame the guy. There's so much to cover. The original reviews don't help out either, because they're 13 years old. And I mean like the ones that actually work since the other ones are all dead. And we've gotta face the facts. Your favorite Minecraft Let's Player isn't gonna make a series about manufacturing POS fuel and EVE or something. I even asked the devs for help because I don't know what I'm doing and I thought they might know the game better. And they just sort of said good luck with this, so I guess they don't really know what to say either. And while I was doing this, a huge Nullsec war started. Ugh. So I didn't have time to do the Black Desert review. I think this is Black Desert. It looks Filipino. It's 13 years old, but thanks to updates, the graphics look great and it runs flawlessly. But the gameplay is what we want to find out here, so that's what's gonna matter. I'm gonna run through mechanics, and we'll talk about features as we come to them. There's one key to mining, and it's really easy. Don't do it. Mining is just the worst. Saying it's atrocious is almost a compliment, it's so bad, boring, and terrible. It also tricks new players into doing it, so let's think like a new player. So you learn how everyone got all separated from like the human race, and now there's four different races hanging out. The story is really not that important. The only thing race decides is like your starting skills and what your character is going to look like in the creator. I'm not sure if like real life works this way, but if you got like one of those fake degrees, please just leave a comment telling me the answer or message me. Now the creator was state of the art when it came out, but it was also very difficult to run, so it's aged well. It's a shame too, because it's kind of a waste. But I'll explain more about that when we get to the third person gameplay section. <laughs> now because Eve doesn't have classes and just like passively trained skills in the background, people can get kind of lost. Or they have something they want to do, but they want to save money for it. So they decide to mine like the tutorial taught them. Here's how you mine. Target a rock. Click F1. You could train an animal to do this, but going AFK is a lot easier and I guess cheaper. Here's why that's bad. You're not really playing EVE, you're just like idly clicking every once in a while like some free-to-play mobile game. People do this because they think they're safe, but that's not true. So let's talk about space security. You might have seen this before. It's still really true. That number up there is your system security. 1 to 0.5 is high security. That means unless you're in an honorable corp war, or like in a duel, you're not allowed to just attack anyone you want. In high sec, attacking a stranger is basically suicide by cop. The Concord police force comes to stop the attacker, you can't stop them, you're dead. The attacker loses security status though, and if he does it enough, he won't be able to come back into high sec, unless he pays for tags or grinds his way up to get back into the police's good graces. Also, the lower that number is, the slower cop response time is. So good luck mining in a .5. A good rule of thumb for mining, and actually like anything else, is the lower that number is, the nicer the things will be. Low sec doesn't have Concord. It has turrets on stargates and stations. So the minerals are nicer, but if you get caught, you're gonna die. Now I've talked to both of the low sec miners, and they agreed that it's not a very good job. So do you want to mine in high sec, or do you want to get the rich minerals and mine ore in the low sec? Yeah! Null sec and wormhole space don't have any guns or Concord, but there's people there that'll try to kill you. The same goes for high sec. You might arguably be in more danger there, since there's entire alliances dedicated just to killing miners. I'll go out and do it for kicks, and take new people with me to do it. It's not, like, difficult at all. Bye bye. Blah, blah. Got him. Nice. 
Even if you have friends who will do this with you, you're still outplayed. Your mining corporation is not going to beat these guys. They don't eat or sleep. These are the bot miners, and there's a lot of them out there. These guys are all over the game, and they're difficult to catch. A player pressing F1 and a bot doing it doesn't register as much of a difference. So these guys are always working very hard and they will outmine you. If I know anything, it's that you can't outrice the Chinese. If mining was a more active activity, it would be harder for this to happen. So it would be nice if that was fixed and it wasn't such a boring time sink. But it did take them literally 10 years to add a loot all button to the game, so I'm not holding out luck. And if you want to move the ore, you have to haul it. If you thought Elite Dangerous was too exciting, and you always wanted to be in Rodeo Beep Boop or whatever, this is for you. You can take hauling contracts and role plays in Interstellar FedEx and give people their stuff. Make sure to fit maximum cargo and no tank. Then minimize the game and start working on your SoundCloud mashup. Calling is for people who like Truck Simulator, let's move on. As far as like PvE questing goes, EVE is pretty standard. There are five kinds of missions. Mining, exploration, trade, research, and combat. And by explore I mean courier contracts for hauling. Let's just play it safe and focus on combat for the time. Now regardless of the faction or like the kind of mission, they'll always come from an agent. They also tell you who you're fighting, so that's a clue on how you should fit your ship. Now's a good time to talk about spaceships. But now there are over 200 ships in EVE, and they get rebalanced and new ones get added semi-frequently, so talking about that in detail would be really pointless. I will say that the variety is really good. You have your traditional combat ships that use lasers, guns, or missiles or whatever, but then you have ships that like turn invisible, or suck people's power, or disrupt their weapons, or stop them from targeting, or reduce their range, or release energy blasts, or launch drones, and it just goes on and on. And that's just for direct combat, since there's ships that can like buff the fleet with links, or heal each other. And boy, are we gonna have a talk about links. But for now, let's focus on the simple PvE stuff. To make the dozens of weapons less overwhelming, there's only four damage types in the game. Thermal, kinetic, electromagnetic, and explosive. NPC enemies deal a certain damage consistently for their faction, and they also have a vulnerability to them. If you ever forget which, some idiot probably put it in his player bio for you to look at. Now all ships have shields, armor, and hull, but which one you tank depends on your ship. You can do what you want though, I don't care. So you need to choose which ship you'll use, what weapons it'll have, and how you're gonna tank it. People spend hours, days, and weeks just figuring out this stuff. I'll talk about combat in more detail when we get to the PvP part. Now for combat missions, a special area in space is created, they go there and you kill the enemies, or kill the boss, or whatever you do. When you complete more missions for a faction, your standing with them goes up. The higher your standing, the more dangerous and lucrative missions you get. It's pretty standard. That's also why I'm not really a big fan of them. They're basically just your typical MMO grind. They're good to do to make money starting out and learn how to play the game, but there's some people who will actually continue to do missions for years and years. I don't know why, like you're not making more money than things like incursions. Incursions are basically like, the high-end PvE. I guess it's EVE Online's version of a raid, since you need dozens of people and healers and all these special tricks to try and make it through alive, but the payouts are very big for everybody. In fact, I'd argue they're way too high of payouts. It is extremely rare for me to hear about anyone dying in an incursion fleet. This problem extends to all the missions because you know what they're going to be doing. After all, your ship and all of your stuff is on the line. It'd be crazy not to look up a guide and see what the triggers are and what damage is being put out and what spawns where. There's just not any variety, it's all static. Now doing missions or incursions in low sec or null sec is more dangerous, but the payout isn't as high as it should be compared to the high sec prices. High sec needs to be way lower. EVE is supposed to be about risk and reward, but this has been way off balance for over a decade. But if you like games where you can like grind and listen to your Spotify playlist or whatever, you've found the right place. Just remember, your missions aren't like a separate instance bubble away from everybody. You can be scanned down and you can have player visitors in your mission site. They might want to do something naughty to you, or they might want your Rex. If they do, congratulations! You found a salvager. That brings us right into the next job to do. Garbage day! Anybody can loot a wreck, but salvaging's a little bit different. You need a salvager or special salvage drones, and they extract materials from, like, the wreckage itself. Now most of these can just be dumped in the market, but some people need them for manufacturing things. 
You can also equip tractor beams to pull the wrecks towards you, or you could just put something down called a mobile tractor unit which does that all for you, so why bother? Now if you go into someone else's site and start salvaging their wrecks, that's called being a ninja salvager. This is a good way to get bounties from mad care bears. Salvaging is mainly a way to get extra money and not like a standalone career path, but if I didn't list it as a career path I'd get a bunch of angry mails from Germans saying how it's legitimate. So we're done with that. Use haulers to move stuff around. Buy low and sell high. That that's it. Why am I doing this shit? All the single furries, all the single furries, all the single furries, all the single furries. A lot of what's been covered might sound like boring jobs. A lot of them are boring jobs. But there is stuff to do here you can't do in other games. Scams, races, and tournaments are good ways to make money, but there's a catch with a lot of these things. And to understand that, you need to understand the EVE community. Now, in my opinion, EVE has the best and the worst, like, online role-playing game whatever community out there right now. They put out all this high-quality content, they have like radio shows that play in the game, all these third-party applications. There's a giant fan fest and they can like hang out with the developers and developers talk to them. There's like this player elected ambassador group and they go out and they meet with the developers and figure out where the game's going. They have drives for disaster relief, they have a player support group for suicidal people. They even put in a mini game that directly connects to like the Icelandic data bank for genes or some shit. Now that was a neat idea, but the first iteration only taught me two things. One, the cytoplasm is the powerhouse of the cell. And two, citizen science really doesn't work well. I don't care how much of your GPU power you donated to SETI, you're not a scientist. So until a Trilarian like leaves a voicemail on your hard drive, no one's gonna take you seriously. So that all sounds great, but what about the other side of the EVE player base? Let's pretend you're back in 7th grade. So you're in your literature class, and today's lesson is on fairy tales. The teacher wants to, you know, get the students all engaged. So she asks each student, what's your favorite? One girl says, the Beauty and the Beast. Another boy says, well, I like Little Red Riding Hood. And then this kid in the back says, the Book of Revelations. Which one do you think played Eve? Look at that! You've probably heard the stories where some guy will heist a few billion from his corporation, or how someone got backstabbed, or maybe someone lost all of his stuff to a scam. Hopefully you should know, the developers praise it. CCP Guard once said the best ship in EVE is friendship. Boy is he right. You don't know who you can trust. There's a ton of people in EVE who are out for themselves and will manipulate or use people to get to where they want. They will wait months or even years at a position just waiting to screw everyone over. I'm not saying this is a bad thing because it makes the game way more interesting, but that's just how things are. And with that in mind, you have to imagine what kind of people get really attracted to this game and stick with it. Maybe you played RuneScape and remembered someone offering you free armor trimming or offered to go out into the woods with you for, you know, adventure. Well, imagine that times a hundred in most major trade hubs. CCP has had some change in leadership, so it's not as hands-off as it used to be, but it can still be pretty bad. But on the other side, you have people who want to make EVE way too controlled, which is really against the nature of the game. Hey, idiot! Ransoming over TeamSpeak doesn't break the Geneva Convention. You play a spaceship video game, you're not Secretary General Ricky Stormgren out to save us all. So yeah, there's some real turbo nerds in this game. They're attracted by all the freedom it gives them, so for better or worse, that's they're gonna act. Now there's a lot of meta stuff you can do outside of game mechanics, but you have to remember the kind of people you'll be dealing with. And since we're in not game territory, let's talk about the walking around the captain's quarters thing. It does nada. I think it was supposed to be like a prototype for World of Darkness, or maybe it was the other way around. But because it was released with the worst expansion in the game's history that nearly killed it, they decided not to pursue it anymore. So the one thing you can do is sit on the couch and watch TV, I guess. The programming quality's really gone up in the past few years, at least. Shocked by it, so I'm up here bashing it because I don't like gay people. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Do you understand that? Ugh, ugh, crap. Exploration is good because unlike these, you need a brain to do it well. Systems can spawn some special areas called anomalies or signatures. Anomalies are typically ore fields or their combat sites, and you could just warp to them by looking at your little menu. If you want to get to a signature, you're going to have to probe it down. You need a special ship for that. Well, technically you just need a probe launcher, but that'll take way too long. The old probing menu was pretty simplistic looking, but the new one looks like that map room from Prometheus. I don't know, I don't really like it. Seeing directional scan ranges on it is great, but everything else just seems way too bright and distracting. 
But anyways, the process hasn't changed. You have to send out probes and then slowly pinpoint where you want to check out. And this could take a while depending on how good your skills are and what you're flying. There are some people who can scan down sites or even ships in like one or two passes, and I'm not one of those people. They like the accomplishment of hunting something down. That's just not my cup of tea. I'm going to focus on data and relic sites for this. And these are basically treasure chests you find. You're going to want to bring a ship with analyzing equipment and bonuses for it, because you have to do a minigame to get the stuff. The goal is to destroy a core without losing enough points to die yourself. It could be anywhere. See, I got lucky here and was right at the beginning, but that rarely happens. Once you beat the game, you get all the stuff. But if you fail the game twice, it explodes and you get nothing. Like everything else, the rewards get better the more dangerous of space you're in, but on top of that, the minigame gets harder too. Like a shore leave to Thailand, there's a lot of good things you could pick up on the way, but it's mostly going to be traps. Some are much worse than others. If you see this restoration node that looks like a medieval breaking wheel, just give up. But if you're new to the game or want to do something that's not shooting other people, it's a pretty good way to make money. And everyone needs a scanner. Now the best thing you could probably find in a lot of these places is a really nice blueprint. And you'll have to manufacture it yourself or find a buyer. So I guess I'll talk about manufacturing quickly. If you're active with it and know what you're doing, manufacturing can make you more money than anything else in the game. Ships are dying all the time, and someone's gotta replace them. Things are built using blueprints, and people have to research better copies of them. That means making it more resource efficient, or inventing a new variant of the ship, like a T2 copy. You can only make copies from originals, and you can't get a T2 original since those were given out in a lottery years and years back. A T2 BPO is basically Warhammer's standard template construct, and you're not gonna find a lot of those. Or if you do, they're gonna be pretty worthless, or someone's very dumb. But anyways, you need materials to run these things. So you put in your materials, start the job, and then you wait. It could be hours, weeks, months, who knows, it depends on the item. Materials can come from mining, exploration, or reprocessing items. You can also get resources from planets. Let's just do that now. If you've ever regretted not being around for the scramble for Africa, this is for you. Planetary interaction is about culturally enriching dirt planets with some big factories. You scan planets from orbit to see what resources they have, and then you set it to be mined and turned into better materials. This was going to be a big thing for EVE. In fact, it's so important it has its own game tied into it called Dust514. It's a PS3 exclusive, and the goal is that player corporations will fight over planetary districts to help their own faction, corporation, or alliance. You can also be a living Call of Duty killstreak by killing all the enemies from orbit. Dust was made by CCP Shanghai, so they're not really the main division of the company. Now, uh, I don't have a PS3, just that N64, so I'm gonna outsource the Dust514 part of the video to someone else. I think that keeps in the spirit of things anyways. Okay, so let's take a minute and look at Dust. Zubas, the publication is... <laughs> game Dude Game Reviews. Hi guys, it's the Game Dude here with uh, a review of the Dust 514. This game is, uh, I've never played the ones before, but they must be pretty good because it's got 500 of them. So uh, this is a new shooting game. It's pretty fun. Uh, I quite like it. It's basically, if you like Halo, but Halo's not realistic enough, you want to get this game because it's like Halo if it was made by the guys that made a realistic game like uh, Call of Duty or Battlefield. So you can see I'm just shooting people. Really fun stuff. Like it's just cool. If you look here, you can see I've got a rocket launcher and I've got a really cool shot of me taking out a tank, which is amazing. You get loads of cool stuff like that. And like the tanks die really easily, it's not like COD. That shot was amazing, like such a good shot, I was so pl pretty pleased with myself when I did that one. And just here you see me shooting the uh, the plane, you get lots of fun stuff like that in this game, like shooting planes, shooting cars, and it's just, it's just really good. I hope this game uh, stays around for a while, it's a really fun game, and I quite like it. So check it out, Dust500. Realistic Halo, that's the best way to discuss this game, Realistic Halo, so Halo if it was made by like the proper army men. Animal stickers and the tiger poster. This game is dead. It turns out an exclusive free-to-play shooter doesn't do well at the end of a console life cycle. Better luck next time! <laughs> this is why people play EVE. At its core, this is a PvP game. You SHOULD be using all that money from all those other jobs to fund your PvP activities. 
But there's a lot of money to be made here selling your enemies loot, so let's take a look at combat. It's like other MMOs in that you have to target and attack someone, and you can't just click really fast to hit them. But there's not any special attacks or abilities. All that is determined by your ship and what you have equipped on it. How effective you are with this stuff is dependent on your skills. These train passively all the time, and they can only be sped up through implants or accelerators. There wasn't a way to just buy more skill points until recently, and we'll talk about that soon. I find the combat really fun, but it's really carried by how final everything is. If you die, you're losing everything you have on you. Now, Conflict and EVE is driven by two things, fun and resource. So where's all the fighting at? Highsec wars are pretty one-sided. It's usually a group preying on people for expensive ships, or it's a mercenary group like Marmite. And they're paid to try and catch people in high sec when they're pretty much unaware of what's happening. There's not really resource wars in high sec, so there's nothing to fight over. So let's go to low sec. Low sec is the land of pirates, and they're gonna be there mainly for PvP. They usually fight for fun, or trying to catch someone with really good stuff on them, but they do occasionally fight over moons. Moon mining is done passively from player structures, and the components from it go towards manufacturing high end T2 components. The nicest ones are in null sec, and that's what people are fighting over a lot of the time. So they're here too, but they're not as big of a factor. The biggest problem I have with low sec is there's not enough opportunities for the pirates to actually be pirates. All the super valuable stuff is being moved through high sec, and that means the gankers and mercenaries are catching all of those. One solution to this could be separating empire space with low sec avenues. Now that's not the worst idea I've come up with, but that has its own problems. But at least it would give more conflict zones for people to fight over. I think low sec missions and other activities should pay out more. You need more wealth down there if you want people to come fight for it. And since we're in low sec, now is a good time to talk about links. Link modules are equipment you put on your ship that buff the fleet. That means having a link ship could give your friends more targeting range and speed and other things that change the dynamic of the fight. Here's the problem. Link ships can be anywhere in the system. That means you could be fighting a fleet with these huge bonuses, and the guy giving the bonuses is across the entire system. But usually people will just undock their link ship from a station and have it sitting on it. You can jump stargates and dock in stations as long as you're in range and you haven't attacked anyone recently. That means a link ship which has no weapons can immediately dock up at the second he sees any trouble. Low sec is notorious for doing this. We actually call it link sec. The devs said they were going to be changing how this works, but it's not in the game yet, so it's still a piece of shit. I think the whole aggression timer thing is pretty unneeded. Being warp scrambled should stop you from docking or jumping a stargate. Would stop all these stupid wait and see tactics where people will just sit on gates and see who's going to jump first and cross jump the other person. It's just a mess. Ideally, I think being caught by someone means you're in trouble and you shouldn't just be able to jump away from it. A lot of people will disagree with me on that, but I'm in favor of making even more dangerous and not safer. Safer means less content, which is why high sec is so atrocious for PvP. So high sec doesn't have a reason for good PvP, and low sec is just missing things that make it a lot better for it. Most of the wars and giant battles you hear about happen in null sec. It's a lot different. Now, I'm not an expert in null sec mechanics, but a lot of people who live there aren't either, so I guess it's okay. L2 Azer might be an important member of Nullsec, but he doesn't understand that iHub is short for Infrastructure Hub, not Industrial Hub, so he's a subhuman. Even if you go into Nullsec or Lowsec looking for a fight, it's not always going to happen. This is due to Sino Fields. It's sort of like a Russian Matryoshka doll, but instead of more dolls, it's an entire carrier group behind it. They might Great. seem to be alone, but in reality they have some friends a few systems over and they just get dropped sure. on top of them. Sign us up, sign us up. Bridge up, bridge up, bridge up, bridge up, bridge up. Break click, Tim, break, jump through, jump through. Break click, Tim, jump through. Break click, Tim, jump through. Go for scrams on the oh, please. Scrams on Cinnabon, scrams on Cinnabon. Cinnabon, scram, scram. So people are going to be a little hesitant before jumping on anybody. Plus, with the exception of wormhole space, they could just look in a local chat channel and see who you are and see if you're with anybody bad. That means roaming around looking for a fight that's not one-sided can be pretty hard. Wars over sovereignty are different, though. Sovereignty is the corporations or alliances that control different nullsec systems. Sovereignty just got a massive change to how it works and structures are being redone, so I'm actually not going to go into the mechanics much here. Basically, you want to remove the enemy buildings and put up your own and removing them can take a long siege to do. Owning a system means you can exploit its resources, but some systems are richer than others. For example, the drone regions aren't very good. I know enough Russians in EVE to form a low-priority Dota stack, and all of them live in the drone regions. I don't know why they love it. But then again, Russians love me too. They want to BE me. Anyways, fights in Nullsec can be really interesting, and the big fleet fights are really neat to look at. The thing is, participating in the giant ones isn't as fun as you might think. 
They have this thing called time dilation. It's clever. It makes everything go super slow, so actions are still taken, but the server registers them. That means in the enormous fights, firing a gun can take 30 seconds or longer. Fights with a few hundred people are lag-free, and they're pretty fun, but if you're a line member, you might get tired of just pressing F1 all the time. Try looking into doing something more specialized, or maybe a leadership role. But that's just me. Some people are really happy with it. As for me, I love the wormholes. Let's talk about the wormholes. Oh! The rattlesnake is here on the wormhole. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. Dog. Okay. Get it. Alright, decode on it. So <laughs> <It's true. laughs> The gecko is not jammed, I'm sorry, I failed. Go for pod, see if you can hold him. One bill loot, one bill loot! Oh my god, pick it, pick it, pick it, I'm full, pick it, I'm full. Wormholes don't have stations or stargates. They don't automatically show you who's in local. They don't have security timers or any of that. And that's how I like it. Player citadels just came out, which can be docked in, but they serve the same purpose as a POS, so it's not like they're completely safe and invulnerable inside them. You could only enter wormhole space by scanning down wormholes. And these can collapse over time or if enough ships go through them. That means constantly having new neighbors and having to adjust every day to a new situation. There's a lot of money to be made from the PvE here, but unlike incursions or high-sec missions, you're not safe when you're doing it. There's a chance another wormhole will pop up and people will roll into you and kill you. This is what risk and reward should be about. Logistics are hard, but the rewards pay off. I'm gonna end this talking about some of the things I couldn't really categorize. EVE is a subscription-based game, but you can actually buy game time within game money with items called Plex. This means if you have a lot of time to invest, you don't actually have to pay monthly for the game. But the item is tied to the player economy, so it can go way up. The reversal means you could buy Plex with real money, and then sell it in the in-game market for a lot of money. This means you could buy better equipment, better ships, and implants so you could train faster. On paper, this is blatantly pay-to-win, since you have an advantage over someone else in a 1v1 on even ground, but the reality of EVE is fights just don't happen this way. You can buy an alt character, but for a fight that means managing a lot at once. And your knowledge of the game will trump the equipment you have every time. Someone who doesn't know what they're doing in a big fancy ship can die to someone in a smaller one who knows how to play the game. But you could kind of make the same argument for FPS games, since you could say if someone buys a big golden gun or whatever, but they don't know how to shoot it, someone with a regular gun will still kill them. But I don't know. I've been playing the game for years, and I've never felt like I had a disadvantage because someone could pay for something I didn't have. The debate got brought up again recently because CCP added skill injectors, which means you could buy skill points to instantly get your skills up, which means real money could mean real skills pretty quick. But there's always been a character market, and people could just buy characters there for a few billion and get all the skills they needed. So that's always been around. So I guess the answer is maybe, but it doesn't feel like it. Because there are no bounty hunters. Nah, there's always room for new players. More tackle is always welcome in fleets, and even in the giant wars, new bros are being used pretty extensively. These are some good corporations to check out if you're new to the game, and I put a 21-day trial link in the description. If you end up trying the game and liking it, I'll throw some money your way. EVE used to get two expansions a year, but now it gets a pretty big update every month, so it's constant. If something happens you don't like, pick a developer on Twitter and just ask them to change things. I'm really not sure how well this works, actually. I have fun with it, but I don't play it constantly. I usually play it for a few months at a time and then take months off. It really will depend on what you're getting into. Some people can live, breathe, and sleep EVE, but I couldn't do that. I hear there's a better space game coming out anyways. Whenever an EVE article is posted somewhere, there's people in the comments talking about this new space sim coming out, and how it's gonna be the best game ever and will change everything. There's a lot of other games I'd like to talk about, but I think the next video is gonna be about that game. I already have some special guests signed up for it. So that's EVE. If you're a purist and I didn't cover burner missions, or epic arcs, or faction warfare, then I'm sorry. I don't have time to go through every little thing this game has. But there's tons. I recommend trying it. Just get into a corporation quickly. The tutorials can only do so much for helping you understand. And you will get bored quickly without friends. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video when we talk about the spaceship game of all time. Or will it be?
find your if channel. If we could turn back time to the good old days.